All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the gold and silver stacking world of the YouTube community, this is Barnun11970, and I humbly welcome you to my channel. All right, guys, I had some good news for myself. I got my brakes fixed. Had some problems with some of my brakes, and they actually repaired all four brakes to make sure it was better for my vehicle. And it cost me a grand total of 75 US dollars for all four brakes. How is that possible? Well, this is what happens when you work with local businesses for long periods of time. I have an auto shop that's literally about a quarter of a mile up the road. I've been dealing with them for years, building up a rapport, and they took care of me. Most places wouldn't even charge that price just for one break. So they only basically charge me for labor. Gotta love it. All right, guys. Um, some of the information I put in my last video about when the Fed was going to have their meeting, either I misinterpreted the article I read or they said it to where it was either misleading or they got it wrong. I'm not really sure, but I apologize for that. That's out of my control, unfortunately. I don't own cable TV anymore. I don't watch the news, so it's a little bit harder for me to get information and have to rely on what's printed. So it was either an error on their half, behalf or I misinterpreted what they said. So again, I apologize. But uh, the Fed did talk this afternoon, and uh, I'm going to mention one of many articles that you can talk about about what's going on. And this is really going to be a boost for us gold and silver stackers, because when you see some of the information I'm about to read, it's really going to show you that holding on to your gold and silver is going to be a very good thing, and you're going to be enjoying a very fun ride soon. All right, so this uh, article was from Market Watch. I will post the link, and like I said, uh, there are many other articles. All you have to do is just Google search. All right, so this article was done at 2.55 p.m., uh, a little less, roughly about a half hour ago, and it goes as follows. All right. Gold futures settled higher Wednesday after news that the U.S. economy shrank in the fourth quarter buoyed the metal's appeal as a safe haven. All right, now listen to that title of that sentence already. It says that the news that the U.S. economy shrank in the fourth quarter. Now, if you listen to the mainstream media, if you listen to Ben Bernanke when somebody shoves a microphone in his face, if you listen to the government and all these CEOs of banks and corporations, they're all trying to convince us that the economy's wonderful. Haven't they been saying that all the time? It's improving, it's getting better, it's stabilizing? Well, you have to think of it from their perspective. They obviously have beer goggles because they really don't see the real world. But if you look at it from their perspective, do you see the president or Ben Bernanke or any of these government officials or bank CEOs hanging out with the regular Joe Schmo on the street, seeing what's going on in the real world? No, they're surrounded by people who drink champagne as a regular beverage, who ride around in Lear jets and stretch limousines, who have mansions and millions of dollars to throw around to buy whatever they want, and uh, wear $10,000 to $20,000 suits. So to them, in their minds, when they say things like, oh, you know, I look all around and the economy looks like it's improving, it's doing great. Well, yeah, it's doing great for them, but that's unfortunately less than 1% of the population. If they actually looked out of their windows more than 50 feet, they would actually see that the rest of the economy and the rest of the United States of America corporation is not doing so well. How can you tell? Well, let's see. Number of people are losing their houses due to foreclosure. Number of people are going out of college and can't get jobs, or they get the basic job, any job they can get their hands on, like working for Walmart or McDonald's. So it will show up in the market as jobs being created. But like, for example, my wife, who just graduated college a couple of years ago, has a master's degree in forensic science, is an incredibly smart woman, and yet she can't find a job, and she doesn't want to settle for working somewhere like Walmart or something beneath her, and not justifying all the money that she had to spend going to college and getting a master's degree in a field that she loved, and trying to get jobs. She's almost every other day trying to find a place that's hiring, and either they're not offering anything remotely near what she should be getting paid, which is almost an insult, or they're saying they want people with experience. So if you don't have experience, you're not getting a job. So the economy is not doing well. But for some reason, they keep telling us all the time, you know, they're programming you by saying, oh, the economy's strengthening, the economy's doing great. And then time after time again, after they do the quarterly reports, we find that's actually not the case. So, you know what? Hello, McFly. It's technically your fault if you believe what they're saying. So right off the bat, we're already showing that they either lie or they don't know what they're talking about. So that's for you to decide. If you want to believe them, then, you know, you're living in la-la land. So let's continue with this article. 
Prices for the yellow metal briefly rose above their settlement levels in electronic trading after the U.S. Federal Reserve maintained its aggressive easing policy stance. What a surprise. They didn't stop the monetary easing. They're continuing the $85 billion a month in their printing. All right, so let's continue. February gold futures rose $19.10 or 1.2% to settle at $1,679.90 an ounce on the COMEX division of the New York Mercantile Exchange. The most active April gold contract added $18.90 or 1.1% to settle at $1,681.60 an ounce. After the closing of trading on COMEX and immediately after the Fed announcement, February gold traded above $1,681 and April gold neared $1,683, then pulled back to just below their settlement levels. Both contracts saw gains of 0.5% Tuesday. Now, this is in quotes. Gold prices seemed indecisive in reaction to the FOMC policy statement probably because the trade was looking for something with more monetary inflation and something with more tension and worry. So, in other words, what's going on is they didn't print more money, which actually surprises me. I actually thought they would come out and say that they might print more, but it's also what they also didn't do. It's not always what you do. Sometimes it's what you don't do. And one thing they didn't do is stop printing the already $85 billion a month. So they are continuing with the same policy. Hmm, definition of insanity. And we'll say it over and over again, which might be insane right there. But it's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So what the Fed just said is, we're going to continue on and basically destroy the economy. And they'll tell you it's doing wonderful for them as they're drinking their Don Perignon. All right, so let's continue with this article. Uh, this was said by Rich, uh, Richard Hastings who is a macro strategist at the Global Huntle Securities. And again in quotes, instead, the FOMC policy story was a continuation of the last statement. End quote. The Fed announced Wednesday afternoon that it will keep buying $85 billion a month in mortgage bonds and treasuries. The Fed's stance is, get ready for this gold and silver people, this is in quotes, Good news for gold investors and will provide support to the gold price and will no doubt help today's earlier price boost, end quote. That was said by Jan uh, Skolas, head of research at the Real Asset Company, a precious metals investment platform provider. And again, in quotes, get ready for this. Gold acts as an inflation hedge. And so as long as the Fed issues statements such as this, then the end of the gold bull run won't be for a long, long while yet, end quotes. I'm going to leave it at that. So if that doesn't tell you what you need to know about what's going on in the gold and silver market, you're going to be very happy and you really want to hold on to your precious metals. Because if you're one of the people who are thinking about selling or have already sold your positions, you're really going to be kicking yourself very soon from now. And this is why I say don't let emotion rule the day and don't be impatient. You know, there are people out there that say people have passion in what they do. Well, if you enjoy what you do, you should have a passion into it because you'll be involved with it. You won't be half-assed like some people who just casually say, ah, you know, I'll do it when I can. You know, for example, if you have a love for cars and you love racing cars, well, you're going to do everything that you can to get yourself into a car and an opportunity to be able to race all the time. But you're going to be smart about it. Like, for example, I stack gold and silver. I started it out as a hobby. I loved doing it. I still love doing it. Any chance I have the opportunity to add to my amounts, I'm going to do, even if that means buying one silver dime for $4. But here's the thing. If this was not going to be something that said long-term down the road, is a, a not a good idea, I would stop doing it. There's a difference between passion in something and being blindly irresponsible with something. So I love this whole thing about gold and silver stacking. I love doing it. It's fun to do. It makes me have passion. I research every day. Since 2006, I've been looking at the market every day. Does that make me an expert? Who knows? I, I don't, you don't have to be a, having a degree from some school that programs you to be able to regurgitate lots of information to be an expert at something. 
Now, I've never claimed to be an expert, but I do know what I'm talking about. And you could see that I've been pretty spot on, especially in the past six to eight months, about where silver and gold is headed. You can't be right all the time, especially when you're not part of the manipulation. But we all have to understand, guys, this is going to take a little while. But if you see by these statements that gold is a hedge against inflation and problems like what the Fed is doing, it's not going to get any better anytime soon because the Fed just announced they're not going to stop printing that money, which means they're going to continue to devalue it. And eventually, as you see, the dollar is decreasing. The euro is starting to increase against the dollar. And eventually, the dollar is going to potentially hit a point where people will say, no more. China will say, I'm not buying any more of your bonds. The rest of the world will say, we're not trading in U.S. dollars or we're getting oil, you know, oil with gold now. We're not going to use the dollar as the currency. So if you are selling, thinking of selling your silver and gold, if you have already sold your silver and gold, I highly recommend you get back into it. Because if you wait too long, there are going to be some interesting times for the precious metals market. Like I've said in the last video, it may not be today, may not be tomorrow, it may take a year or two. But in the grand scheme of things, is that a really long way to go? Countries are storing gold. Banks are storing gold. They're slowing down their sales of gold. That should tell you everything you need to know. And the fact that the Fed is going to continue to do the same thing, which we've seen has not worked, things are not going to be getting better. So if you think there is going to be a crash in the precious metals market, I'm sorry to say you are going to be very disappointed. It's wonderful to talk about. It makes for great controversy. It creates exciting videos for some people. But I'm not here to be living in la-la land where I'm trying to make everybody's you know, life feel better by stroking their ego. I'm going to tell you what I believe in and what I see. doesn't guarantee I'm right. But if anything, I will stay consistent. I'm not going to be changing my ideals every other couple of months because it's convenient because that's what people want to hear. I'm not here to make people do anything. People ask for my opinion, that's what I give, nothing more. If you don't like it, just don't watch it. So thank you for watching, guys. Keep stacking, keep an idea of what's going on in the world, and don't let the emotions take over your decisions. You made a right decision if you picked physical gold and silver. Let's put it this way. What other commodity would you trust in a collapse kind of scenario? Would you trust fiat currency? Will this $20 bill, this $100 bill, this $10 bill, do you think they'll have any value if there's an economic collapse? All your stocks that you have, where you're making some money on, if all of a sudden there's a stock market crash or the economy collapses, are you going to have any value there? What about your property? Because remember, if you ever check into the Fifth Amendment, the government can take property at any moment. They do have to compensate you, but they have the right to actually take any property that they want. So, you know, gold and silver is a little bit harder to confiscate when they can't find it or if you sold it. But you can't really hide property. So think about these things, guys. I love you all, even the people out there who will never even watch this video and just hate it because they don't like me. I wish nothing but the best for all of you. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your day and make sure you have your pets spayed or neutered. Peace, peace, and peace. The triple peace. Out.